For many fans, the black and gold era of NXT was something near and dear to their heart. Just letting people be people, not handcuffed by Vince McMahon's flip-flop booking, and having their own cast of unique characters. Names like Finn Balor, Johnny Gargano, Sami Zayn, Aleister Black, Asuka, the list goes on and on. But maybe the most important signing in NXT history is Adam Cole. It was the summer of 2017, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, and out of the crowd he came to kick Drew McIntyre flush in the face with Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly by his side. And for NXT, nothing was ever the same. The group would go on to be known as the Undisputed Era. Eventually, four guys who could do a bit of everything. They could cut promos, they could obviously go in the ring, they could make you laugh, shout out Kyle O'Reilly, and they could do everything in between. However, the leader of the group was Adam Cole. In NXT, he became the guy. Genuinely as good as Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and Finn were, when I think back to the prime of NXT, that insane consistent run of weekly television and the amazing takeovers, Adam Cole is the guy that comes to mind. He already had a huge following behind him from his independent days with ROH, but over the coming four years, he would become one of the models of consistency for in-ring work in the WWE and the poster boy for NXT. Insane matches with Aleister Black, Ricochet, that cursed ladder match at TakeOver New Orleans, inside of war games, and even on the main roster for a little bit. So, the year was 2019 and by accident and chance, Adam Cole got to contend for the NXT title. The story goes like this, we were headed to take over New York and it was going to be Gargano versus Champa for the NXT title with Gargano finally getting his moment. It was a story that had gone on for the better part of the past two years. These guys had started as a tag team broken up only to both become huge single stars and kill each other in every way imaginable and this was going to be the grand finale but Champa got legit injured, had to have neck surgery, they needed a replacement for him in the main event and that ended up being Adam Cole. It was the battle of two of NXT's best in a 2 out of 3 falls match for the vacant NXT title. TakeOver New York was an excellent, excellent show. The opener with Black and Ricochet vs the War Raiders, Pete Dunne vs Walter, one of my favorite matches of 2019. And then in the main event, these two went on to battle for nearly 40 minutes. Cole with the first fall, Gargano with the second, and when it came to sudden death, these two had everyone on the edge of their seat. Near fall after near fall, false finish after false finish, Dave Meltzer creaming his pants in his dungeon whipping out 99 stars. But at the end of it, Adam Cole lost. This match received a split reaction and it still splits reaction to this day. Some genuinely saying that it was the best match that they had ever seen and some people saying that they way, way overdid the false finishes. Nonetheless, Gargano had his moment but the quest didn't end for Cole. He wanted a rematch because he beat Gargano in the first fall so Triple H went alright let's run it back. The rematch would take place at the 25th NXT TakeOver. In the lead up what's actually forgotten is they teased the Undisputed Era breaking up Cole was eating losses accidentally kicking Roderick Strong in the head but that breakup wouldn't be for another 2 years. The story headed into TakeOver was that Cole just couldn't do it on his own. He always needed the Undisputed Era. That brought us to the main event of TakeOver 25, June 1st, 2019, one fall to the finish and in my opinion, out of the eventual trilogy that these two would have, this was their best match. It was well paced, the near falls weren't overdone and the crowd was invested. 31 minutes and at the end of it, Adam Cole was your new NXT champion. He promised that in 2019, every member of the Undisputed Era would win championship gold, showing everyone video packages of the new NXT intro which only featured his guys. But we weren't done just yet. Adam Cole went on what he called the Bay Bay Championship Tour, going to the UK, defending his title there, defending it at live events, and even going to Cleveland, the same place where Gargano had brought the NXT title to a wrestling school after he won it, and there was a trainee there named Named Tuan Tucker. He let him hold the title and he told him that one day he could do it. You know, the basic chase your dreams and you'll never fail kid speech. Well, when Cole won the title, he went to Gargano's dad's restaurant, hung up an 8x10 of himself and ordered some pizzas. Went to that same wrestling school and was basically like, yo Tuan, listen, good luck buddy, not gonna happen. Told all the students that they should just quit wrestling training. At TakeOver Toronto, it was gonna be the finale, the end of the trilogy, one man was going to walk out, the winner and the NXT champion. And for lack of a better term, this was going to be a three stages of hell match with each man picking a fall. And if they were still tied after that, which of course it always is, then Regal would pick the last one. Gargano picked a street fight, 
Cole picked a one-on-one -on -one match. But before that, Cole came out telling everyone that he's going to defend the NXT title and brought out Tuan Tucker. He brought Gargano with him, classic NXT arena brawl, and that brought us to the six. TakeOver Toronto comes and everyone in the Undisputed Era could have ended the night as champions, but that didn't happen for them. Cole and Gargano had a 52 minute match, Cole winning the first fall, Gargano the second, and what Regal picked was a barbed wire steel cage match where the only way to win was by pinfall or submission. Weapons attached to the cage and these guys went all out and all the way to the top of the cage where NXT started this trend of killing Adam Cole at every single takeover. Both of them fell from the top of the cage to their demise. Cole landed on top, made the cover, and he was officially done with Johnny Gargano. On the August 28th episode of NXT, the Undisputed Era became three-time NXT Tag Team Champion, so three-fourths of the group all had championship gold. Roddy set his sights on Velveteen Dream and the North American Championship, However, something big was just a few weeks away. NXT was going big time. They were no longer going to be on the WWE Network. They were going head to head with AEW in what was coined the Wednesday Night War. The leader of Team NXT was none other than Adam Cole. And here's where he just went insane from an in-ring point of view. Defended his title against Jordan Miles, who was going to be big in NXT if that whole t-shirt controversy never happened. September 18th was the first NXT on USA, but this was when they had to split the shows on the network and on TV. On that show, Roderick Strong won the NXT North American Championship, and everyone in the group had a championship around their waist. To kick off the first true NXT on USA, Adam Cole and Matt Riddle just went absolutely wild in one of the best TV matches you'll ever see. I can't show all the sequences in full, but there were some insanely fast-paced stretches in this match. Cole retained, and at the end of it, Finn Balor returned to NXT after three years away, and his sights were set on Adam Cole. But he wasn't the only one. Tommaso Ciampa, the man who was supposed to be in that title match against Gargano, returned from neck surgery and now Cole had two targets on his back. Here began the build for both Survivor Series and War Games 2019 and here's where the guy just became the workhorse of the WWE. On the November 1st episode of Smackdown, NXT invaded WWE. It's crazy how a plane being stalled led to one of the best Smackdown episodes that WWE has ever ran because everything was a genuine surprise. Well, on that show, Adam Cole introduced himself to Daniel Bryan and in the main event for Cole's NXT title, these two had a perfectly paced match and it was so, so good. I honestly don't know what more I can say. Cole took the win against Bryan in his singles main roster debut. The following Monday for many, it was a dream match between Seth Rollins and Adam Cole in the WWE. The crowd was honestly so dead for this match. The first ever NXT champion versus the man who would go on to become the longest reigning NXT champion, again for Cole's NXT title. This one ended in a DQ for Cole, another good match. Regardless, on Raw and SmackDown, facing Bryan and Rollins back to back is a hell of a feat. Defending the NXT title only makes your reign stronger. If that wasn't enough, he had a War Games Advantage match later on in the month, which he won too. Now we were headed to Survivor Series and Cole was going to go back to back. First in a War Games match, then he had to defend the NXT title the following night. At War Games, they killed him for the second time in as many takeovers and made him fall from the top of the cage. Again, Cole ate the pin here because they were moving towards Champa versus Cole at a later takeover. But the next night, he and Pete Dunne went out there and for fans who weren't really familiar with their game, they showed everyone just what they could do. Adam Cole retaining his title in probably the match of the night at Survivor Series. And if that wasn't enough to kill Adam Cole, yeah, how about we have Keith Lee launch him into the crowd the show right after Survivor Series. Come December, it was a triple threat match between Keith Lee, Tommaso Ciampa, and Finn Balor, the winner getting to face Cole for the title on the final live NXT of the year. And the winner of that match ended up being Finn Balor. When Gargano returned, he was distracted, and following a pretty strong match, Cole retained once again. So as 2019 came to an end, Adam Cole just cleaned up the NXT awards. NXT Male Star of the Year, Rivalry of the Year, Match of the Year, Undisputed Era won Tag Team of the Year, and the overall competitor of the year went to the king himself, Kona Reeves. Just kidding, Cole won that too. And with that capped off, maybe the best NXT year ever. The following year, personally, I thought it was going to be even better. Cole and Undisputed Era took on Imperium at Worlds Collide, and before that, they went to take out Imperium on NXT UK. Listen to this chop from Gunther. Oh, 
Man has been While that was going on, Champa had Cole's name circled and he was looking to get back what he never lost. Worlds collide and Undisputed Era lost in a really exciting match that probably would have been better if Imperium didn't lose one of their guys early on. And now all eyes were on the Pacific Northwest and in my opinion, the last true NXT TakeOver. TakeOver Portland, the grand finale to what had been years and years of excellence. The show after Worlds Collide, Champa lays out all of Undisputed Era and Regal brings out a contract for Champa and the match was on. It was going to be Adam Cole against, in many's opinion, the greatest NXT champion of all time at TakeOver Portland. Champa signed the contract with his blood and as far as NXT matches go, this was the biggest one they could probably put on at this point. The Undisputed Era was hunting down Champa and attacking everyone in their path. I don't know if you guys remember how much of a fun time this was for wrestling on Wednesdays. We had both AEW and NXT firing on all cylinders. There was so much quality content to consume and it was great. One week before TakeOver Portland, Velveteen Dream returned and spoiler alert, that was going to be Cole's next feud. At that show, Champa was taking bumps like like he didn't just have neck surgery. Cole dying as per always, just a fantastic, fantastic main event. But it ended with Cole winning after Gargano attacked Champa, because they were gonna run this story back for the 50 billionth time. Cole was now the only one in Undisputed Era left with championship gold. Roddy had lost his North American title earlier in the year, while Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby lost earlier in the night at TakeOver. Next for him was going to be the Velveteen Dream at TakeOver Tampa Bay. Bay. That show never happened because, of course, it's 2020. UE had taken out Dream in 2019, apparently throwing him off of a truck. Cole was just chilling at home, dodging Velveteen, sending in video messages, but Dream had a pinfall victory over Cole in a tag team match. When they went ahead with that match, this was easily the worst match he had in his title reign. He retained and now we were in June of 2020 and he hit one year as NXT champion. This was also the time where we had shows from the Performance Center, NXT brought back In Your House, this time in TakeOver form. Cole vs Dream, one more time at that show, backlog brawl with the stip that if Dream lost, he couldn't challenge for the title as long as Cole was champion. It actually looked like it was Dream's time, 23 years old, the match was average it wasn't anything too special. Dream though lost this one and Cole's reign continued. This is where Cole's reign started to plateau, maybe because of a lack of opponents, but it also did look like Dream was going to take the title off him at TakeOver Tampa Bay because they'd been setting it up for almost half a year. After this feud, there was this weird period where he was helping Roddy face his fear of Dexter Loomis and car trunks, going to therapy with Yui. At the same time, we had a new act hit NXT and that was Karrion Cross, who was sending messages to Adam Cole telling him that his time was up and that he was going to kill him. Shout out to those five guys who post that Cole Cross promo on Twitter every two weeks. Keith Lee, the North American champion, also had his eyes on the NXT title. So did Johnny Gargano and so did Finn Balor. So William Regal did the classic Regal announcement. You always knew it was going to be something big when he showed up. He made Gargano versus Balor versus Lee North American championship. The winner of that match would go on to face Adam Cole for the NXT title at the Great American Bash in a winner take all match. And this is where NXT started to make just weird decisions. Why are you doing a winner take all match? You really don't have to. Of course, they wanted ratings. They wanted to beat AEW. Regardless, the winner of the first match was Keith Lee. And in a rather anticlimactic way, Keith Lee beat Adam Cole in a fun match to become the first ever holder of the NXT and NXT North American Championship. After this, the title kind of went into limbo for a bit. Lee held it for just over a month before losing it to Cross. He vacated it due to injury and then Cole and Finn competed for the championship with Finn taking the win. Adam Cole after this kind of just aimlessly drifted around NXT before things culminated with the Undisputed Era finally breaking up in 2021. And for a guy that a lot of people thought was going to be big, and I mean really big on the main roster, he never saw the main roster. He said that he had a conversation with Vince McMahon and he wanted to change his name as well as his presentation. But when Cole heard this, he said that he saw this as a red flag and it was also reported that they wanted to make Cole a manager and have him work with Keith Lee. Cole said that was never the case. Following the completion of his feud with Kyle O'Reilly, he left and he went to AEW and now it looks like he's destined for big things. This title reign, in my opinion, is the strongest reign in NXT men's championship history. Adam Cole was the guy, specifically from the summer of 2019 to take over Portland. He, through his in-ring proficiency, carried the brand, and there was also a huge level of importance to his segments. 
Cole came to NXT, showed up and showed out, and Triple H utilized him so, so well. In this video, we've only really covered his NXT title reign, but from the onset, he was the guy who, like I said, was at the top and he could do anything, be put anywhere, and always excel. His NXT run was really, really good, and his NXT title reign was the height of that. For my money, the best NXT champion of all time, because no one else really had a run like Adam Cole. No one was able to keep things as fresh for as long as he did, have the workload that he did, and consistently deliver. But as always, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think of Adam Cole's NXT title reign? Do you think he's the best NXT champion of all time like I do? Let me know in the comments below. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I guess I'm obligated to end this video like this. Take care, guys.